Hello Lifeline, my name is Shallon and I am really excited to be sharing this week's midweek mentor with you guys. We're going to be talking about productivity in a pandemic. Um, this is somewhat of a part two to the last midweek mentor that I shared and that one was titled Routine and Chaos. Um, and in that one I talked about managing kids schedules, keeping them on track during chaotic days. Um, but this time I wanted to talk a little bit more on some of the same topics and then also share some things that I do myself to keep me um, productive. So feel free to watch this video as a standalone or you can go back and revisit that one if you think that that will be helpful to you. So before I share my fun tips, because <laughs> they're super fun, <laughs> at the end, um, I do have a couple of points that I want to hit first. And the first thing being, what even is productivity and why do I need to be productive? And when I think of productivity and how I've been taught is that true productivity is being a good steward of the things that God has given to you and seeing fruit produce in your life because of that. Productivity is not simply being busy all of the time. And I can speak for myself and I'm sure that everybody can relate to those seasons of life where you're super busy, you have a full load on your plate, you're, you're saying yes to seemingly good things and then being completely worn out at the end of each day. You're not feeling very good about what you accomplished. You're not feeling connected with your family or your friends or the Lord. That is not productivity. So thinking on all of the things that make up your life, um, family, um, your home, your finances, school, etc., all of those things, what does being a good steward of those things look like? I have a scripture for you. It's Proverbs 21, verse 5. And it says, the plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance, but everyone who is hasty comes only to poverty. So let's talk about that for a moment and the difference between diligent and hasty. Because I feel like at first glance, I probably would have put those in somewhat of the same category. In fact, I know that I have told my children before to make haste. <laughs> So um, let's look at the definitions. The definition of diligent is having or showing care and conscientiousness in one's work or duties. And then the definition of hasty is acting with excessive speed or insufficient consideration. Wow. Who would have thought that excessive speed was insufficient? So taking that and applying that to our daily lives, am I showing care and being conscious of my roles and my responsibilities? Or am I running around with excessive speed and incapable of truly doing things well? I know so, that so many people are adjusting to their new normal with distance learning, working from home, um, or even working out of the home and still managing your kid's school. That's a lot. That's a lot on its own, even without adding in all the other responsibilities that you have. So first and foremost, be encouraged. God is aware of your circumstances right now. And I think that we all have a tendency sometimes to fall into a place where we separate um, our day-to-day -day life and spiritual things. And that's simply not true. God wants to be a part of the everyday tasks that we have, including school with your children, be it a small season or a long one, it's happening. We have no control over it, uh, but we are called to manage what we are given well. A couple of weeks ago, Pastor Elliot did a great midweek mentor all about that topic, managing your life in uncertain times. Um, so I'm not going to go deep into that. Go watch his video. It was awesome. But he did encourage you all to take a look at your life and start pulling out the weeds of the things that don't belong there. Oh, sorry if I hit that. Um, so I'm hoping that you guys have been doing that over the last few weeks, praying that God would reveal those things to you. Because that would, be, that would be my first tip to you guys, is to remove the things that don't belong there. Allow God to prune your life and help nurture the things that do belong there. Psalm 121 verse 2 says, My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. So invite his Holy Spirit to guide your days. He is the ultimate helper. 
Now, before I share my tips, I do want to say I am in no way saying that anyone needs to be more productive. If God is calling you into a season of go slow and rest, then go slow and rest. These tips are not for you. These tips are for the person that is struggling to manage a schedule and they um, need to keep their day flowing with their kids home, distance learning in a pandemic. And also these things are meant to be fun and helpful. None of them are the end all be all of healthy productivity. Some of them might not work for you, so don't do them. <laughs> but if you have disciplines that you follow in your own life that might help me or somebody else watching, share and interact in the comments. I would love to see them. I don't have everything figured out, so please help me. <laughs> uh, okay, so my first point or topic that I want to hit block scheduling. I talked about this in my previous midweek mentor um, about how I block out times in my day for school and my family, but I didn't fully explain it. Um, so typically my days run in five blocks. I have five blocks throughout my day. I have my morning block, my kids morning block, my school block, my work block and my evening block. So I'm going to run through those quickly with you guys. My morning block, that's when I get up, I have my quiet time with the Lord. I clean my house. I get it ready before the hurricane children wake up. <laughs> I get ready for the day. I drink my coffee. All of the things that I need to do to clear my brain before the chaos of the day begins. And then there's my kids' morning block. This is when they wake up. They do their morning chores. They get ready for the day. They have breakfast, etc. Our school block is exactly that. That's when we get our schoolwork done. My work block follows the school block. And by that point, my kids are usually over me by that point, And so that's when I can find quiet time to concentrate sometimes. And I get any schoolwork that I might have done, phone calls I need to make, tasks I need to get done for one project or another, and any home things that need to get taken care of. Laundry, dishes, groceries, all that really fun stuff, you know? And then we have our evening block, dinner, showers, nighttime chores, time with my family. Those are my blocks. So again, in my previous video, I talked about rhythm versus routine. And I really want to stress this because I don't have set times for any of those things because every day is different. Those are just the natural rhythms that our day flows into from one block to the next. The block scheduling is not a new idea. I think tons of people use it probably in better ways than I do. I didn't come up with it. So if you're interested, I'm sure you can find books or blogs on the topic. Um, quick little Google search, take you down a rabbit hole, I'm sure. Um, but the purpose is to designate time for specific tasks. So that way I'm not running around trying to multitask and then not actually getting anything done. That's being hasty. We don't want to be hasty. It's assigning certain tasks to certain times of day um, so that you can diligently complete said tasks. Um, so my second tip is use a planner. <laughs> this one really makes me laugh because um, not that long ago, I would never have used a planner. I considered myself a go with the flow kind of person. I didn't need a planner to go about my days. It just wasn't who I was. But as I added things to my life, mainly homeschooling, it, it became a bit of a necessity. And now, I say often, if I don't write it down, it doesn't exist. And I really mean that. <laughs> I just, I have so many different categories of things floating around in my brain that if I don't write it down, there is zero chance of me making sense of it all. So now I'm a pen and paper kind of girl. I have a good old fashioned paper planner. I know that there's plenty of calendar apps out there, daily planner apps that you can use to benefit yourself. Whatever works for you, do it, run with it. I love it. Um, I've tried those. Technology is not my friend, so I stick with paper, but you can do whatever you want. Um, I wasn't going to show you guys this, but someone told me it would be helpful, so I am. Um, this is the one that I use if you care. It's called the Day Designer, and I got it off of Amazon. I have used so many planners, so many planners, and this one is my favorite. And they do actually make different kinds, so um, I'll show you the inside. Um, and if this is the one that you're looking for, just be careful. Like, look at what it is that you're ordering. Um, this is a, what a blank day looks like. So it's, I like ones that are broken down by the half hour mark, not 
necessarily to stick to like a rigid schedule or anything it for them mainly because it provides me with more space to write I like a whole day for my page or a whole page for my day but also it it allows me to write down the things that are time sensitive appointments phone calls things like that um it helps me block out my days a little bit better um, and then along with the planner, number three that I wanted to talk about is lists. Um, <laughs> I'm going to show it to you again, like an actual day. Hopefully there's no like personal information on here. Um, but I love lists. I make a list every single morning as part of my morning rhythm. Um, I get up and I write down everything that I need to do that day and everything that I want to do every single thing even the really silly things like get ready for the day or make breakfast and lunch <laughs> you might think that's really silly but have you ever found yourself in the mid-afternoon and your kids are starving and you realize you haven't fed them or is that just me <laughs> i write it all down write it all down um so again an example in my like i don't know, I don't know what's on there um in this section where it's broken down by the hour, that's where I write down like the time sensitive things. That's where I write down all of our school things because it's stuff that doesn't change and it's stuff that needs to be kept track of. And then in this section, it just says to do and then there's like check boxes. And that's where I, that's where I make my list every morning when I wake up all the things that I need to do and then I can check it off as I go. And then there's a note section also. And that's what I call my inbox or like my invoice, whatever. Um, and that's just anything that comes in that day that I need to uh, figure out later. I'll, I'll get to it like uh, in, just information that I need more detailed things. That's where I put that kind of stuff, if that makes sense. I don't know. My brain is crazy. <clears throat> so anyway, make lists. Make a list of everything. Um, it gives you satisfaction when you're checking those things off, even the really silly things. And it keeps you on track to know what you have to do next. I never have to think about things twice. Um, if I write things down right away, that right there is holding myself accountable because it's there and I'm not gonna forget it. And when my work block rolls around, I can look at that list and I know exactly what it is that I need to be doing. I pick the most important thing, I get it done, and then I work my way down the list. <clears throat> and then if I don't finish everything on that list, it moves to the next day when I get up and I make my new list. Um, Pastor Elliot let me borrow a book last year um, and it's called the the GTD method or the getting things done. And he actually let me use it for this video, but this is it. Um, and honestly, this, it was kind of an overwhelming book It is really good. That's where I got um, that tip from that. You don't don't ever think things twice. You should never have to think things twice. If you write it down right away, it's there. It lives there. You can reference it. It doesn't need to float around in your brain, just making things cloudy. So um, it was really good. This is Pastor Elliot's. If you want to borrow it, ask him. <laughs> Put that down. Um, make lists. Okay, so my tip number four is tomato timer. <laughs> so I've actually heard this tip um, from lots of different people, and I think different people use it in different ways. And I looked it up, and it's an actual like productivity method. It's called tomato timer. And it gets its name from like those old school uh, like kitchen timers that look like tomatoes. Uh, kind of interesting. I don't know. Anyway, for me, I use this when I have like a big project that I need to get done or something that requires a significant chunk of time for right now. For me, this is like anytime I need to write a, a paper um, or something like that. And so you take 30 minutes and you block out all distractions, put your phone in the other room, get your kids set up with something to keep them busy and safe for a while. Turn off the TV, turn off music, unless you're my husband, who's super weird and he functions really well with music in his ears i don't know how people function like that let me know if any of you guys are like that um but if you're like me turn it all off <laughs> so and then you set a timer for 30 minutes and you put all of your effort into that one thing and it ends up being way more productive than if you were to spend like a couple of hours half focused when you're constantly picking up your phone or um dealing with the tiny humans um and usually what happens for me is it ends up being so productive and I get so much done and I'm on such a roll that I just go ahead and end up finishing that project. Um, and rather than procrastinating for like days and weeks. So tomato timer. It's a great, it's a great tip. Use it. Um, and then number five, this one I feel like is going to make people kind of mad, but I don't know, but wake up 
before your kids. <laughs> uh, I implemented this in my life like four years ago and it changed the game for me. I know not everybody can do this. Um, if you're in a season where you have small children and you're like waking up throughout the night, definitely don't push yourself to get up early. That would be torture. <laughs> But even if it, but if you can, even if it's 10 or 15 minutes before your kids wake up, it makes such a big difference. When you have that time to let your brain wake up before the little energy siphons wake up. <laughs> Honestly, if I have a day where um, I sleep in and I get woken up by my kids demanding naps, it is going to be a rough day. <laughs> so try it. Try it, try getting up before your kids, even if it's just a 10 minutes, just 10 minutes. Um, if it doesn't work for me, work for you, you can yell at me, but I highly encourage a trial run of it. Just, just try. And number six is the last and the most important, and I'm repeating it because it's that important, and that is rest. I said this in my last video, um, there's actually uh, another recent midweek mentor that's just dev completely devoted to rest. Go back and watch that one also. Um, rest. I wouldn't be able to do any of the things that I do if I weren't resting. And I have two parts to this resting. The first one is keeping a Sabbath. God commands it. <laughs> uh, have a rest today. For me, that's Saturdays. I don't answer my phone, I don't do any chores, I don't do schoolwork, I rest. I sleep in, I snuggle with my kids, we play board games, we watch movies, we go get ice cream, I read a book that I've been meaning to get to, I rest. You should rest. This means that I have to prepare for that. So usually the day prior, I'm making sure that I'm getting all of the things done that I have to get done so that I don't have to worry about them on my day of rest. And then that day fills my cup so that I can enter into a new week fully prepared for all the things that come my way. When I don't Sabbath or rest, it's really apparent and I get burnt out and overwhelmed and my fuse gets real short. I'm sure you can all relate. Part two of rest, so part one was Sabbath. Part two is actually somewhat new to me. <clears throat> um, I just finished a book for a class called Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. Some of you might know it. 10 out of 10, highly recommend. Get yourself a copy. Copy, this is what it looks like. Great book. Um, I've read it before, but I read it again. And um, one of the things that they talk about in that book is the daily office, which essentially is what you or me would think of as like a morning time or devotions, but several times throughout your day. I mentioned earlier, um, how we can tend to separate ourselves from the, or separate the Lord from the daily tasks that we have going on. Um, and this practice of the daily office throughout your day, it's the rhythm of stopping and realigning with the presence of God. And this can look different for everybody. It can be reading scripture, putting on some worship music, praying, um, or even just sitting in silence and listening for what the Lord has to say to you. It keeps you focused, and on track with him guiding your days as opposed to us guiding our days because that's a disaster, <laughs> right? So those are my tips. Uh, I hope that that was helpful to you guys in this crazy year of 2020 being stuck at home. Um, I'd love to pray with you guys. Father, I praise you. You are such a good God, even when I'm struggling. Um, I praise you that your strength is what helps me and my weakness um, and that you are where my, where my help comes from. Uh, Father, I pray that you would forgive me for the things that I don't, for the times that I don't hand over my days and my minutes to you and I attempt to manage my days by myself. Thank you for the availability of your Holy Spirit and your word to instruct me and that you don't leave me to figure things out on my own. Help me to be a good steward of my mind and my time and my gifts so that I might point others to you as their source as well. And I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. So uh, that was great. I encourage all of you guys to talk in the comments, share your disciplines with me. I would really love to come back and hear it, um, what your disciplines and habits are. And if anybody is in need of prayer, if you have any questions, please reach out to us. All right, love you guys, bye.